Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Kids Online, Kids Time Online for April 4. This is our primary class online. Um, so welcome to everyone. If you watched us last week, welcome back. If you are new, we're happy to have you. So we will get started with our lesson for April 4. Um, we'll start with our traditional, what we're thankful for. So as you're thinking about what you're thankful for, to share with those that are watching with you, I will share that I am thankful that all my family is together. So it's great to be isolated with your family. We get to spend more time together and um, do some fun things that we don't usually have time for. So thankful for that. And you guys might be thankful for that too. Um, let each other know what you're thankful for today. And I have a challenge for you. Most of you will have families all around you while we're being isolated. Let's think about someone this week who might be all alone in our community. Maybe it's a neighbor or a church member or a relative of yours that is all by themselves. They don't have family that live with them, so they're isolated all by themselves. Maybe you can borrow your mom or dad's phone, give them a phone call, cheer them up with um, a message or just a conversation. And so that's my challenge for you today, this week, to try to reach out to somebody who might be all alone, who doesn't have the blessing of family all around them. So give that a try. All right, we are going to have our prayer, and as last week, you are welcome to send me your um, prayer requests at 250-788-5339, and I did receive some requests last week, and I appreciate them. I did pray for them this week, and I'm happy to keep praying for any of your requests, so send them to me at 250-788-5339. Okay, let's bow our heads. Dear Jesus, thank you for Sabbath. Thank you that we can have a time to just be quiet for a little bit from all the busy stuff that we're doing and just learn about you in a fun, exciting way. Please, please be with every primary child wherever they are, in their homes, wherever they are. Please be with them and their families. Keep them safe and healthy. And thank you for loving us no matter what we do and no matter where we are. We love you. Amen. All right, it's offering time. So get your offering that you, um, offering jar that you started last week and put in your offering. I dropped mine in a little bit earlier. And so we're saving up our offering maybe for our 13th Sabbath offering. And we've started a brand new quarter this um, today, which means a new area in our world that is going to get some help from our offerings. And this quarter, it is the Trans-European Division, and three areas in that division. So if you find your, your maps at home, you can look way, way, way up in Norway is one project way down by Italy, over by Italy, close to Italy, in Serbia, is a, our second project. And the third one is in a country called Cyprus. And that is close to Turkey. So those are the three places that our offerings are going to go to. And they are going, the projects are um, churches, building new churches, starting a church, and making centers of influence. And those are that's a big word for kind of like a, a building like a rec center where lots of things can happen from cooking schools to kids activities to um, sports that bring people together. Lots of learning opportunities to teach people about God in those centers. And our our, less, our mission story for April 4 is called Fear Not, and it was, it was a neat story about a little girl who is eight, some of you might be eight, her name is Rebecca, 
and her had her and her mom had been on vacation in Estonia with her mom's grandparents. I guess they were Rebecca's grandparents. And but they were having to head back way up to um, Norway, their home in Norway, and they were worried about a few things. Mom was going to be starting a new job as a nurse, and she was a little worried because she couldn't speak Norwegian very well. She speaks Estonian from where she was brought up. And Rebecca was scared to go back to that school because on the last day of the year before, a girl had been very unkind to her and said some really mean things. And so she was really worried about going back to school. So they were both very fearful. But they found a verse in Isaiah 41.10 and they had the idea to learn that verse together and pray every day several times and repeat that verse to help them feel better and help them not to be scared. And they did. And that verse is, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And of course, the first day of school came and the first day of work came and they had great days. Mom was able to speak Norwegian really well and um, Rebecca met the girl that had been mean to her and she was kind now. So God worked out those details and they weren't afraid um, because they had prayed that Bible verse over and over and that really helped them. And it's really cool, you guys could get to watch the Ho Rebecca and her mom say that verse in their language, in their Estonian language. And you can look that up on YouTube at this address down below, bit.ly slash r-e-b-e-k-a dash k-e-r-e-s-i. And it's really sweet to hear them say the words in their language. So look that up this week. All right, now to introduce our lesson, just give me one second here. Put this towel over my arm, can you see that? Mm. And I have here, especially for you, primary student, a plate full of delicious food. You like what you see there? Can you see it? Grapes, tomatoes, asparagus, apples, oranges, celery. Well, you may not like everything on the plate, but I'm sure there's a few things that you might like. So, how special does that make you feel when someone brings you something served up? You didn't have to do anything for it. You didn't even ask for it. They just brought you something special. And it's just for you. You didn't have to do any work for it. All you have to do is eat it and enjoy it. What do you think about being served? What are some ways that um, people serve other people every day at home or at school? Can you think of some ways? In what ways do people serve other people in your home? Your family, do you serve each other as a family member? Well, I know your mom does a lot of serving because mainly she's probably the one that does most of the cooking, right? And sometimes you just end up sitting at the table and there it is, voila, there's your meal. Um, or the cleaning, yeah. But I know you guys are probably, you help in some way too. You have chores that you can do that help serve in your family as well. And have you ever been so sick that someone had to do everything for you? Yeah, that's happened to me, where you can't even get out of bed. So people who love you really take care of you. They bring you medicine, they bring you food or water, things that you might need, extra blankets. They do that because they love you. They're, they're serving you when you are sick. Today we will hear how Jesus served his disciples by doing something a servant would have been paid to do. 
Jesus wanted them and us to continue serving others. The memory verse today tells us more. It says, Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. That's in John 13, verse 14. So our message today is, we show God's love when we serve others. So we show God's love when we serve others. All right, so for our lesson, and remember on my board there are some things here that um, supplies that you might need if you want to participate at home while I do it here. So our lesson is talking a bit about some some dirt and because we have so much snow outside in Shetland right now I could not find any dirt so I decided I would make some dirt. So I'm making some dirt with a little bit of salt, so some salt, and dirt is brown, so we need to mix in some cinnamon to make our dirt brown, and I'll just mix that around, and it actually starts to look a bit like sand. Whew. Cinnamon is going to make me sneeze, I think. All right, so maybe a little more cinnamon. It's not quite brown enough. Make sure my... Okay, here we go. Okay, sorry, I had to turn that back on. It shuts off after 12 minutes. So here is our dirt. Do you see our dirt? It's kind of like sand. But that goes with our story today. Um, one of the customs of people where Jesus lived was having servants wash the feet of people who came to vis visit because they walked outside and they had sandals and or were bare, barefoot. And as you know, in the summer, what happens when you walk outside? Your feet get pretty dirty, don't they? So if I put my hands in this, I'll just wet my hand a little bit. If I put my hand in that, um, what happens? My hand gets full of the sand, doesn't it? So it's full of sand. That's what happens with the feet. And that's where our story is. Um, the servants would wash the feet of everybody coming into the house because they'd be dirty and you don't want dirt tracked all around your house. Just ask your mom. So they had servants to do that job. Now it was just about the Passover time when Jesus went to Jerusalem and think for a moment about what the Passover feast meant. Do you remember the Israelites and the ten plagues and during the last plague the firstborn son had died unless the blood of a lamb had been put on the doorpost and every year after that the Jewish people had a feast to celebrate that miracle the miracle of the angel of death passing over their houses and leaving their children alive Jewish people still today celebrate the Passover so Jesus was having his supper with his disciples and the meal was ready to be served and it was just Jesus and the disciples there and there were, was no servant around. And Jesus did something very strange to the disciples. Jesus got a towel and he got a basin and some water and he poured water into that basin and he went and knelt down at the feet of each disciple and he put the disciples feet in the water and he cleaned them he cleaned them off and then he would wipe their feet with a towel and go to the next disciple 
It was pretty quiet in that room. They were not understanding why Jesus, their leader, um, the king, so to speak, they knew that, that Jesus was a very important man. And they were following him. They were his disciples. And he was washing their feet, a job that a servant did. And when Jesus got to Peter, Peter was like, I'll have none of that, Jesus. You are not going to wash my feet. I need to wash your feet. And Jesus knows what Peter's thinking, and he says kindly, You don't understand now, but you will. Peter still is like, pulls his feet away. You are not going to wash my feet. And Jesus says, I have to wash you, Peter, if you're going to be one of my people. So Peter says, all right, Lord, not just my feet, but my hands and my head too. He, Peter, really wanted to be one of Jesus' people for sure. Later, Jesus tells his disciples, I'm giving you an example. And he tells them to wash each other's feet from then on as a way to remember how to serve others. So Jesus was our example that it is really important to serve others. And he did that by washing the feet of his disciples' feet, or washing the feet of his disciples. And there are lots of ways that we can serve others now. Maybe not by washing their feet, um, but there are other ways that we can show um, Jesus' love by how we serve in our community, how we do things for other people that need extra help, that maybe need help with their carrying their groceries to their car, or maybe they need help in their yard um, raking or shoveling snow. Definitely some could use some help with that. So there are lots of ways that we can serve others at home and in our town and at our church. And you will probably remember that there are times in our church where we do have foot washing. And that is, we do that not really to clean each other's feet because we don't walk in dirt. They don't get too dirty anymore when we go to church, do they? But we do that to help us remember that we show God's love when we serve others. That's the lesson Jesus wants us to remember by that. All right, so our memory verse is, and you can help me with the memory verse today. I have hidden four feet in this room, and I need you to help me find them. And they will help us with our memory verse today. So the first foot, I think you can probably spy pretty easily. Good job for those that spotted that right off the bat. This one says, now that I, okay, we need to find foot number two. What about up here? Did you spy that? Eagle eyes in the primary class? Good job. So now that I, your Lord and teacher, is there another foot somewhere that you can see? Check it out. Oh, I see it. It's way over here. Let's put that foot down and we'll see what it has to say. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, there's one more foot to finish our verse. Can you find where it is? You looked up high. Have you looked wide? Hmm. Have you looked low? Good for you if you spotted the low one. This is our last footprint on our verse. Let's start from the beginning. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, I put a few texts out. You can look them up at home and you can discover other ways that Jesus helped to serve. He obeyed his parents. He healed the sick. He taught people about God. He fed hungry people and he blessed children. 
So this week, our last thing that we're going to talk about is an activity that you can do. You just need a piece of paper and some markers. And you are going to write on your card at your service. And this week, you are going to write, draw something on the inside that is a yucky task maybe, kind of like washing people's feet, that you are going to do for somebody, maybe your mom or your dad. And draw a picture of it on the inside or write about it. You can see what my yucky task is. I'm going to tell my daughter that this week I will clean the kitty litter box. That's a yucky job, but I will do that to serve her, to give her a break from doing that. So let's, this week, remember to show God's love when we serve other people. Thank you for joining us. Um, God bless you and keep you healthy. Dear Father, please be with us as we go about our week. Keep us safe and keep us remembering to serve others. And help us to always do that in showing others your love. In your wonderful name, amen. Bye-bye. See you next week.